you know, I probably should have done this review a couple of months ago. Ah oh well. Live and learn. Welcome to the Galil. Hello, I'm Raging Amish, and this is the Galil and Black Ops. For the last three months, I have received a barrage of messages that went something like this. Where's the Galil review? Why haven't you reviewed the Galil? When's the Galil review going to be done? You lazy Amish review the Galil. I'll admit, I probably should have done this video a while ago. But you know how the saying goes, save the best for last. And that's pretty much what I've done here. To the Galil fans out there, I thank you for your patience. Patience. Patience, my love. This gun is another one of those weapons I didn't know existed until I played Black Ops. Personally, when I heard the word Galil, I thought it was something from Lord of the Rings. You know, you've got Gandalf the Wizard, Gimli the Dwarf, and Galil, the King of the Assault Rifles. Hail to the King, baby! I'm going to be completely honest and tell you I love this weapon. The Galil brings so much to the table. Few primaries match what this rifle can do. So with that said, on to the review. Unlocked at level 20, the Galil is available early in the Prestige. You won't have to wait long if you want to play with this gun. Like many of its assault rifle brethren, the Galil is fully automatic with a fire rate of 750 rounds per minute. This is pretty standard for the assault rifles. The rate of fire is good, but not great. That's really all I can say on the matter. If you're looking for something that is unique on the Galil, then check out the magazine size. Typically, assault rifles have either 20 or 30 round mags. That's not the case here. The Galil has a whopping 35 round capacity. Whoa. An extra 5 bullets may not sound like much, but trust me, it makes a difference. Those extra 5 bullets will save you in a lot of battles. On top of that, the big mags also mean you get a healthy starting loadout. The Galil comes with 140 rounds by default. Only the M60 and the RPK start with more. But wait, it gets better. Each shot is very strong. The rounds do 40 to 30 damage. You're looking at a 3 hit kill up close and a 4 hit kill at a distance. Hitting the head will reduce the number of shots to kill by one. Thankfully, the range of the three hit kill is quite good. The Galil will start to drop off at about 37 and a half meters. In close and medium range combat, you should get a three hit kill. The four hit kill should only kick in when fighting targets at long distances. So far, the Galil has sounded amazing, but I don't want to deceive you. When looking at the rest of the stat sheet, little stands out. Once you get past the large magazine and the strong shots, the Galil is a little lackluster. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Well, believe it. For starters, this gun has the standard assault rifle movement rate of 95%. You won't move as fast as the SMGs, but you're still quicker than the LMGs. The penetration power on the Galil is also per the norm. Like most assault rifles, this gun has medium penetration power, meaning you can shoot through thin barriers with ease, but will need hardened for more robust targets. Also, the Galil features assault rifle crosshairs. You can definitely fire from the hip and have success, but I don't advise it. Use hip fire as a panic option. I believe you're far better off aiming down the sight. Up next, we've got the switch times, which are actually pretty slow on the Galil. You can raise the gun in 0.9 seconds and drop it in 0.6 seconds. The drop time is okay, but the raise time is bad. Keep this in mind if you play a lot of hardcore game modes. Switching to the Galil is a bit of a hassle and can potentially get you killed. I do not fear death. What a badass. Anyway, moving on. The Galil aims down the sight in a quarter second. This is standard for an assault rifle. The ADS time is decent enough. Slate of Hand Pro isn't necessary. The base version of Slate of Hand, however, might be needed. I say that because the reloads on the Galil are horrible. The gun reloads in 2.8 seconds by default, or 3.8 seconds if the mag is empty. 
the bullets into the chamber at the 2.2 second mark. The Khalil easily has the slowest reloads of any assault rifle. The Khalil pays a price to get that 35 round mag, and this is it. The reload speed is pathetic. Slate a hand will be your friend. Up next, we've got the recoil, which is low. The reloads may suck, but the recoil is another stat where the Galil shines. You will not have a hard time keeping this gun on target, and I'll show you why. For starters, the recoil profile is as follows. You have a value of 60 upwards, 60 to the right, 10 to the left, and 20 downwards. The gun will go up and to the right at a 45 degree angle. These values are remarkably small which makes handling the kick so much easier. Well, hello, Mr. Fancy Pants. Countering the recoil profile is a center speed of 1500. I'll admit that doesn't sound too great. A center speed of 1500 is at best average, but you must remember the recoil profile is low. A value of 1500 will get the job done. If I still haven't convinced you, well, the Galil has one more ace up its sleeve. The irons are crystal clear. On some assault rifles, you need a red dot to compensate for poor iron sights, but that's not the case here. You have the flexibility to pick your attachment of choice on the Galil. Speaking of which, let's see what you can throw on this thing. Extended mags. This attachment ups your magazine capacity to a whopping 50 rounds. The Galil is a borderline LMG when using extended mags you will be able to lay down a slew of bullets and rarely have to reload. This attachment gives you the flexibility to move right from one foe to another. Definitely consider including extended mags in your loadout. The attachment is flat out amazing. I know exactly what you mean. Dual mags. This is yet another solid option on the Galil. Dual mags will make every other reload a bit quicker and offers two additional starting mags. As I touched on earlier, the Galil's biggest weakness is the slow reloads. Instead of picking slate of hand, you can try using dual mags. Picking this attachment will free you from needing slate of hand. It seems this attachment can only get better, because dual mags also negates the need for scavenger. You'll start with a whopping 210 rounds if you pick this attachment. That is simply amazing. Red dot sight, reflex sight. I'm a bit on the fence when it comes to these things. Having a red dot definitely helps with precision. Coupling one of these attachments with Slate Hand Pro really is a powerful technique. Still, let's be realistic here. You will be better off if you learn how to get by without a red dot sight. As I've said before, the irons are rock solid. Picking one of these attachments is a bit of a waste. Dual mags or extended mags would probably be better selections. It's your choice. You take the blue pill. No, not that kind of choice. ACOG scope. <laughs> no. Infrared scope. The IR attachment is amazing on this rifle. I love how... Wait, uh... Oh, I'm sorry. I seem to be reading from the wrong script. One second. <clears throat> no. Flamethrower. Ah oh, man. This attachment is still crap, folks. This isn't news. It's a shame, really, if you think about it. I enjoy torching my enemies, but at a certain point, the coolness wears off and the suckiness sets in. Master Key. Bad idea. Suppressor. As per the usual, this attachment removes your red dot from enemy radar when you fire your gun. You pay a price, however. The suppressor reduces the range of your three-hit kill. Personally, I don't think this attachment is a good choice on the Galil. With such a large capacity, you want to put out as many strong shots as you possibly can. You'd be better off with another assault rifle if you want to use the suppressor. Grenade Launcher This attachment plays almost identically to the grenade launcher on the AK-47. I'm not kidding. The Galil and the AK both feature the GP-25. Every other assault rifle has the M203. Whoa. The grenade launcher is a great anti-camping tool, and it fits well on the Galil. This rifle is solid all around, so the grenade launcher really will add to what you can do. 
campers will not be a problem because you'll be able to flush them out of their hiding spaces with a well-placed explosive. With the grenade launcher done, that's the end of the attachments. But what about the perks? Well, that's up next. For the blue tier, you've got options. Personally, I liked Hardline. The Galil is pretty much designed for getting quick two killstreaks thanks to the large mag. Hardline will turn those double kills into spy planes or RC cars. Flak Jacket is also a great choice. The immunity to explosives will really come in handy if you like to play objective game modes. Bomb sites and flag sites are always ripe with grenades and claymores. Flak Jacket will be invaluable. Ghost is yet another solid choice. However, please don't use Ghost in the suppressor. I try to be tolerant in my reviews. Okay, I'll rephrase that. I normally try to be tolerant in my reviews. But let's be honest here. Mixing Ghost with the suppressor is kinda a bitch technique. I can live with people using just Ghost or just the suppressor, but when I see someone using both, a bombshell goes off in my head. Ghost and the Suppressor slow the game down, because you are forced to check each and every single corner looking for that one camper. Please, don't be that person. Your dignity will thank you. Moving on, the red tier is pretty simple. Slate of Hand is easily your best choice. The biggest weakness on the Galil is the slow reloads. Slate of Hand cures this ill. If you don't want to use this perk, then select either dual mags or extended mags. Each of these attachments will give you the liberty to pick something else. For instance, I loved using extended mags with Hardened. The bonus of reduced flinch helped me win a lot of gunfights. If you pick dual mags, Warlord becomes a pretty solid option. I don't know if it's sheer dumb luck or a certain coolness factor, but I love mixing dual mags with a red dot sight. The setup just feels like a natural fit. Last for the green tier, I say stick to Hacker or Tack Mask. Hacker is an ideal fit when coupled with Ghost or Hardline. I like to play aggressively when using the Galil, and Hacker definitely helps when it comes to spotting campers. Tack Mask, on the other hand, is a better fit with Flak Jacket. If you're already immune to explosives, why not add tactical grenades to that list? Tack Mask will turn you into a mobile tank. With the perks done and out of the way, I've got something to say. I've been secretly hiding a personal frustration throughout this review. You see, I feel like I've already covered this gun. Not once, not twice, but three frickin' times. The Galil has three brothers in Black Ops. Specifically, I'm referring to the Enfield, AK-47, and the Commando. All of these rifles shoot at 750 RPM and take three to four shots to kill. I feel like the devs tried to pull the wool over our eyes and stretch one rifle into four variants. I got news for you, Treyarch. You're not fooling anybody. That still only counts as one. At a certain point, redundancy turns into idiocy. If you ask me, Treyarch should have combined all four rifles into one gun. You could call it the Command Field 47. It bothers me that all four rifles play exactly the same way. Ah well. I can't change the game. I can only hope the developers learned a lesson. Do not make guns similar. It takes away from the game's diversity. Alright, I'm done bitching. And besides, I've still got one big subject to cover. We know how the Galil can be used in enemy players, but how about the undead? It's time for the Galil in Zombies. So, let's take a look. In Zombies, the Galil is an amazing gun. Available only from the box, this rifle comes with a huge ammo loadout, very powerful shots, and almost no kick. You should always take this gun from the box when it pops up. At the very least, the Galil will be a very solid moneymaker. If you throw this gun in the Pack-a-Punch, you get the Lamentation. Say hello to an even better weapon. That's impossible. This rifle is stronger, comes with more ammo, and gets a bonus multiplier against George Romero. The Lamentation flat out kicks ass. You should always throw the Galil in the Pack-a-Punch when you have the points to spare. With both zombies and multiplayer covered, we are nearing the end of the Galil. The big thing that stands out to me about this gun is how much fun it is. 
I know many agree with me because the Galil is the number three used weapon in the game. Seriously, it's one step behind the AK-74U and that other gun, which we're not going to talk about. How about I give you the finger? Thankfully, that's all this primary has in common with those two guns, because the Galil is actually balanced. The gun may be popular, user-friendly, and even a bit overused, but it's not overpowered. If anything, the Galil's only real problem is its lack of identity. Personally, I think the Galil is awesome. You have a huge attachment selection, powerful shots, and a big mag. Few guns in Call of Duty are so much fun without going one step too far. Let's give credit to the devs for getting this gun right. Kudos, Treyarch. That concludes my review of the Galil. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll join me next time, where I'll be doing something special. You'll have to forgive me, because I'm going to be devious and not tell you what it is. <laughs>